So it's basically an aluminum ruler that's fairly thick, uh, and it's got this stop, and it's got all these holes in it. Um, and uh, it does basically three things relatively well. Um, and uh, so we'll pull it out of the package here. And we'll take a look at the package as well, because we're going to read some of that. So this is it. It's uh, there. It does three in one blade alignment. You can draw a circle as a hook rule. Whoops, I'm off the screen. Um, hook rule. So you've got this little hook. We'll look at that first. Look at the first two things first. And uh, so if you wanted a, um, you know, an eight inch line from the edge of this shelf, if you will, let's go off the side here. Um, so you bump it up to the eight inch line, tighten that just like any other hook ruler. And now you've got a nice scribe point along the end here uh, to measure eight inches. So uh, simple as that. Um, we can pull this off for the next two um, functions. Uh, the next one is a, uh, a circle. So draw a circle. This actually says on it, uh, with center hole spaced every half inch, draw a circle for cutting bowl blanks. So they actually thought about bowl blanks. Let me, uh, let me zoom into that. So yeah, they're you know they're talking about making bowl blanks, even though in their picture they're not. Uh, maybe they are cutting wood. I'm not sure, but uh, looks like a piece of plywood. So anyway, uh, it's uh, it's kind of nice to be able to have uh, something thought about wood turners in these kind of things. So we've got this little pin that's kind of gets stored on the end here. We've got. It took me a while to figure out this this uh, scale issue. I'm going to flip it on this side because this is really the side we use. So this side is ruler side. 1 through 12, and then it's got um, end marks here as well uh, for finer things. So it's about 12 and a half inches long. The other side is for, for drawing circles. And we've got an A scale and a B scale. Because we got these magnets in the way, um, the 5 and a half and 6 inch mark kind of gets lost. So if you want A scale, then that pin will go through and now you can use that as the pivot point and swing this pencil in any sort of one of those lines and go. Anyway, so uh, the A um, scale on top gets you every half inch up to five and then to six and a half, uh, seven, seven and a half, eight. If you need the five and a half and six inch, then move into the B down here, the, the bottom one and use this five and a half and six inch here, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, et cetera, down there. So I don't know if you can see that, that's kind of glaring. So so that's what these numbers down here are for. It's for the B scale uh, because these magnets get in the way. Why are these magnets here and why is that slot there? That's for the next function. And uh, we're gonna go to a different view and take a look at those. I've got my Tailstock camera set up to the uh, bandsaw as well as the wide camera. And we'll take a look and we'll play with drift on our bandsaw blade. So if I uh, take this uh, magnet, I'm going to figure out which I'm on that camera. So uh, we take this thing, uh, bandsaw companion, and we use these magnets. And this slot here is made for the set of the teeth so they don't interfere with the drift. And we put that right there on the blade. Then we can see uh, that we've got, and let me turn this other light on. Where's the button? There it is. We can see we've got this thing kind of set up and I'll, I'll switch back and forth to this view. Uh, we've got it set up, magnetized to the blade. It's just kind of balancing there. And uh, the set of the teeth are not interfering with the, the straightness of the of the bar. And so what we can do now is if I look at this, this view, um, we're going to judge the gap of our miter gauge up here. It's very shallow all the way down the blade to see how well it's running to the miter saw blade. That's my phone. And it looks fairly even. So if I change my bandsaw blade to where it drifts 
And uh, bear with me as I get behind my bandsaw here. And I'm going to spin the wheel by hand. The bandsaw is unplugged, by the way, uh, just so you know. So there's no power to this guy. Uh, I've got the, so I've just moved the, uh, the wheel, turned the wheel where the bandsaw blade is moving. So this goes down to the bottom. And I'm just changing the drift on my blade. So you can kind of see how well this thing kind of measures. So that should be pitched one way or the other. So now, oops, a little too far up. We'll let that settle. And we will see it's a bit of a gap there and it's tightened up to where it's almost touching there, the back. So we've, we've changed our drift on our blade quite a bit. So uh, that's one thing to look at with this thing. Um, so we can change that back and uh, hopefully I go the right way and don't take my blade off. Let's loosen that again. This is a Minimax 16 inch bandsaw. It's an Italian made Centauro. So I'm going the wrong way with my uh, three horsepower there, thereabouts. There, it's getting back in the wheel. And we go kind of crazy the other way. A lot of these bandsaw blades have sort of a crown to it. And as the bandsaw blade gets to the front or the back of the blade, then that, that crowning changes the pitch, uh, the pitch of the blade over that crown and changes your drift angle. So now if we take a look at this one, where we've gone radically the wrong way, we've got a gap at the back. And is that better here? Or there, no, here, I guess. We've got a gap at the back, but up front, now it's hitting. So it's hitting there. So we've changed the, the drift completely the other way. So we need to go halfway in between that. So let's change that again. Oops, my light. And I think we're almost there. All right, let's try that. And pick that up again. Still got that drift. I need to go a bit more, so. Here's that light again. Keep knocking that down. Try that. We've got about uh, three eighths of an inch back there, about an eighth of an inch there, a bit more yet. Let's try that. Okay, quarter inch. And nice and parallel all the way down. So that's set nicely to the miter slot. So now what we need to do is check the, uh, the fence and see where that's uh, at. So I'm going to close that up and lock my drift knob. And we'll move on this side. And we will move our... Um, fence up and I don't have if I had some um, some nice uh, sort of uh, setup blocks or some nice shims they're nice and even I would use those against there and see how close and feeler gauge them but uh, basically if it's uh, if if it's out of whack on my band saw I loosen this one nut and I can change change the drift so if we look at that and so I hit that too quick. 
touching at the end and gapped out here. So uh, I need to change that back the other way. Or I need to kind of just nudge that end out a little bit. This is bouncing a little bit too much still. Maybe just another tap. And I'm just sighting it by eye. That looks nice to me. So I hadn't really done this before, uh, you know, getting this device very much. I do need to replace my blades at some point, but now I've got a um, fence that's parallel to the blade, that's parallel to the miter gauge. So that is uh, really a great setup, and uh, I think uh, it's simple to use that way. So that's the bandsaw companion.